Hello everyone and welcome back to the Sight YouTube channel. In this new video series, we will be discussing the most influential experiments in psychology throughout history. Psychology has a rich history with many important and groundbreaking experiments. These experiments all lay the foundation for what psychology is today. Because of the vast number of experiments that have been conducted throughout the history of psychology, we will limit each video in this series to a particular decade. In this video, we will specifically be focusing on five influential experiments that were conducted in the 1950s. Now, it is important to note that in the 70 years or so since these experiments were conducted, the scientific methods and tools that we use have developed and improved a lot. Thus, some of the experiments that we will discuss in this video and future videos in this series may have used certain scientific methods that by today's standards may be seen as a bit outdated and in some cases even unethical. Nevertheless, all experiments that we will mention in this video have been incredibly influential and have sparked countless of the modern experiments and theories that we see today. With that being said, let's get started. The first experiment that we will discuss in this video is the conformity study conducted by Solomon Ash in 1951. Ash was interested in studying people's tendency to conform when exposed to societal pressure. In his experiment, Ash invited his participants to his lab where they were shown pictures with lines of various lengths. Their task was to match the length of the line to the left with one of the three lines on the right. The crucial part of the study is that in each group of participants, most of the so-called participants were not real. They were actually confederates, experimenters that only pretended to be participants. These confederates were instructed to purposely give the incorrect response to the question. This was done to determine whether the true participant in the study would conform to the group by providing an answer that is obviously incorrect, or if they would give the correct answer and thus going against the grain. The results of this study showed that most participants would at some point conform with the rest of the group by providing an answer that they knew was incorrect. This study has been very influential to the field of social psychology. The second experiment that we will cover in this video is the Robbers Cave Experiment. This study was conducted by researchers at the University of Oklahoma in 1954. In this experiment, 22 boys aged 11 and 12 were randomly split into two different groups. These boys attended a summer camp, but the groups were sent to different areas of the camp, each with their own cabins and other facilities. The groups were assigned prior to their arrival to the camp, and the boys were initially unaware of the other group's existence as the groups were kept apart for the first week. In the first week, the boys in each group spent most of their time doing activities together such as hiking and swimming. By doing these activities together, the boys began building strong social bonds with each other. When the two groups finally met, the boys showed signs of hostility and prejudice towards each other. This hostility was intensified when the experimenters had the groups compete against each other in a series of activities where the winners would receive prizes. The intergroup hostility now became both verbal and physical. At some point, the two groups became so aggressive towards each other that the experimenters physically had to step in to separate them. After a few days of conflict, the experimenters wanted to tackle this hostility by attempting to turn the two rival groups into friends. To accomplish this, the experimenters had the groups engage in fun activities together such as lighting firecrackers and watching movies. This did not initially work, so the experimenters instead decided to have the groups engage in activities that required teamwork and collaboration. This eventually ended up being successful in eliminating the intergroup hostility. This experiment shows that individuals who don't know each other will form an in-group with each other when they are brought together in group activities with common goals. It also shows that intergroup hostility will arise when two groups compete for resources. Importantly, the study also shows that this intergroup hostility can be resolved through collaboration. The third experiment that we will cover in this video is one that was conducted by George Miller in 1956. 
In this experiment, that was dubbed the magical number 7 experiment, participants were given a certain number of stimuli that they had to memorize. Miller found that the average number of objects that a person can hold in their memory at a given time is around 7 plus minus 2. This finding, which came to be known as Miller's Law, describes how our memory capacity is limited to memorizing 5 to 9 objects such as words, numbers, or concepts. This explains why large amounts of information is more easily memorized when it's divided into smaller units of information. This process is referred to as chunking. A common example of chunking in everyday life is how we memorize phone numbers. Rather than memorizing a phone number like this one by memorizing each individual number, we memorize it in chunks of information. We could for instance memorize it in 4 chunks of information such as 555, 12, 89, 56. The fourth experiment that we will cover in this video is known as the surrogate mother experiment. This experiment started in the late 1950s and continued into the early 1960s. The experiment was conducted by Harry Harlow who was interested in studying the importance of a mother's care and love for the healthy development during childhood. In the experiment, Harlow separated newborn rhesus monkeys from their mothers and had them instead be raised by two surrogate mothers. One of these quote-unquote surrogate mothers was made of soft cloth suitable for comfort and the other one was made of wires with an attached bottle for food. The question became, which of these surrogate mothers would the newborn monkeys prefer? The results showed that the monkeys would spend much more time with the cloth mother and would seek it for comfort and security when faced with threatening situations. They would only seek the wire mother for nourishment. This experiment was influential in the study of childhood attachments and it provided us with insights into the importance of comfort and physical bodily contact. The last experiment that we will discuss in this video is one that was conducted by Leon Festinger in 1957. Festinger conducted an observational study of a cult that believed that the earth was going to be destroyed by a flood. In preparation for what they believed to be doomsday, many of the cult members would sell off their property. When the day came and went without any flood, there was a discrepancy or dissonance between what the cult members believed was going to happen and what actually happened. To deal with the negative emotions that stem from this discrepancy, many of the cult members would adjust their beliefs to match reality. They did this by claiming that because of their dutiful work, God had decided against the flood. The negative emotions that stem from conflicting attitudes and beliefs is referred to as cognitive dissonance. This study is one of the more influential studies in psychology as it sparked a tremendous amount of experiments on the topic of cognitive dissonance. If you want to learn more about cognitive dissonance, you can check out our Psychology 101 video where we discuss the topic in a bit more detail. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give us a like and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to ring that notification bell and we'll see you in the next video.